We just never know where a mafia fugitive might unexpectedly pop up. It might even be a perplexing appearance in a jihadist outpost in a shadowy part of the world. The mob moves in mysterious ways, certainly, but Italy's Camorra Mafia drug trafficker Bruno Carbone, one of Europe's most wanted fugitives, being captured in Syria's disputed northern borderland by a former Al-Qaeda affiliate, took even jaded mob watchers by surprise. The mob reporter here with a deep dive into a still unraveling story. A dangerous globetrot from one of Italy's sturdiest mafia strongholds to jihadi territory in the Middle East, past a hidden drug war in the desert before returning to Italy, where shocking news of mob betrayal emerged. Let me tell you about it. The chain of events revolves around this guy, Bruno Carbone, 45 years old. An Italian mobster and international drug broker who, until recently, sat as one of Europe's most wanted. Carbone had been on the run since 2003, fleeing a 20-year sentence for international trafficking. This is just some of what he left behind. Carbone was caught crossing from Turkey into disputed regions of northwestern Syria back in March, but nobody knew it. He was captured by the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham known as HTS, a militant group controlling the borderlands of Idlib. He told his captors he was a Mexican, on the run to avoid paying a fine for selling fake Rolex watches. He spoke Spanish and had documents to support his claim. It appears he was turned over to what's called the Syrian Salvation Government, which controls patches of territory in that troubled region. But their investigation revealed a greater truth about the man they held. In the words of an official in Idlib, Carbone is an heir to the Camorra Mafia and a prolific drug trafficker. The official said Carbone bribed and tricked his way through several countries, trying to get to regions controlled by Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. Carbone's goal, the rebels said, was to, quote, get as close as he could to the world's chief drug source. Unquote. That's a hard swipe at Assad, as accusations pile up that he's running a de facto narco state. It's unusual for such militant groups in the area to work cooperatively with Western governments, and the awkwardness of this was obvious. The Idlib rebels thanked Turkey for helping sending Carbone back. Italy arrested Carbone when his plane landed in Rome, but Italian officials didn't mention Syria or the jihadis. They instead thanked the United Arab Emirates. Since the rebels don't have relationships with Western governments, it is plausible that Turkey, the UAE, or both helped negotiate and arrange Carbone's deportation. One thing that is clear is that European authorities consider Carbone to be a high-value target, an elite part of the powerful Camorra, one of Italy's traditional mafias that formed in Naples. Carbone, they say, was responsible for large-scale procurement of cocaine in South America, destined for Europe, usually through Spain, in cahoots with Colombian cartels and Rafaela Imperiale, another Camorra mega-trafficker. We'll come back to a shocker about Imperiale in a moment, but we're not yet done with Carbone. Like the best underworld yarns, Carbone's story comes with a sidestep into farce. In 2019, it was announced that Carbone had been arrested in Dubai after being stopped at an airport. After a month in prison, they figured out the poor guy's pleas of innocence were right. It was the wrong guy. The man was guilty only of looking like the mobster. It's hard to ignore a known Camorra drug trafficker like Carbone being in that part of the world. It brings attention to a wild hidden war on drugs, one that involves regular firefights with casualties mounting each month. The Kingdom of Jordan says it's waging a war with armed pro-Assad cartels who are smuggling a flood of Captagon across the border from Syria. Captagon is an amphetamine pill, once a pharmaceutical prescription. It's now banned in most countries, although in a counterfeit form, it remains popular in the Middle East. The Captagon cartels are a blend of organized criminals and armed militias. Drugs dangling from drones, larger loads packed in trucks, all routinely smuggled through the border between Syria and Jordan and then sent on to the Gulf states. Nine million pills, for example, were found hidden in these fake oranges in Beirut. The heat of these border skirmishes can be seen through one that's recently been prosecuted. 
When Jordan's armed forces detected a border incursion, they responded forcefully. Three smugglers were killed and two injured in a firefight. Six others ran back into Syria. The two that were injured were sentenced to 20 years hard labor. The amounts being seized are wild, and we know they aren't getting everything, not even close. In June, about 1.5 million Captagon pills were seized by Jordanian officials during multiple operations. This batch was seized in October. 818,000 Captagon pills after a shootout. Another skirmish unearthed another 600,000 pills. A particularly large load was captured after a dawn shootout in late October. The Jordanian army captured a truck stuffed with 6 million pills. In November, Jordanian authorities incinerated drugs seized in 490 cases, including hashish, heroin, marijuana, meth, 5 million Captagon pills, and a tiny amount of cocaine, less than a kilo. It shows coke is really a Western obsession. More fighting with smugglers in Jordan came this week. After a shootout, the army found hashish, ammunition, and more than 3 million Captagon pills left behind. Also this week, across the Arabian Peninsula in Kuwait, authorities there announced a seizure of their own, 335 kilos of hashish and 1 million Captagon pills. It was smuggled by sea, hidden in vehicles. Carboni's presence might also help connect a shocking discovery from the summer of 2020. A world record stash of Captagon pills, found not in the Middle East, but at a port in southern Italy. This is an astonishing sight. 84 million pills weighing 14 tons, hidden in heavy paper rolls and industrial machinery. It was valued at more than a billion dollars. Italian investigators say the product was destined for the Camorra and came from Syria. With the situation there at the time, they pinned the source on ISIS, the terror group, but it turns out it was linked to the Syrian regime. Could Carbone have been building an alliance there? Could he have been looking for sanctuary? Well, we might one day know exactly what he was doing, because there's one last twist that may have even deeper ramifications on the underworld's elite. Italian media describe it as an earthquake hitting gangland, with reports that Carbone and Raffaele Imperiale have agreed to cooperate with Italian authorities to become pentiti, as they say in the language of Italy, rats, as they say in English. Just when rumors of Imperiale's cooperation spread, so did arrest warrants, leading to these raids, targeting 28 people believed to be linked to Imperiale's Italian operation. Imperiale's cooperation might well have made it possible for the incredible arrest last month in Dubai of six members of the so-called super cartel. Imperiale was a key part of that group until his arrest in Dubai last year. What other secrets might he reveal? Please tap the thanks button, you should find it somewhere around this video, to lend me a hand, or join me on Patreon for perks and bonuses. And remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. That all gives me a lift as well. Thanks for watching.